search for the X factor that accounts for the complexity of life, we have to follow the evidence. So what have we seen so far? Let's begin with the cell. What was a mystery to Charles Darwin is now well understood. We know that the cell encodes and transmits information that regulates the size and shape of living things. And we know the cell is comprised of insanely complex machinery. What's more, much of it is irreducibly complex. All the parts are necessary in order for an irreducibly complex system to work. Irreducibility is evidence that all the parts were formed intentionally, with the end purpose in mind, not randomly over time. Finally, Darwin's explanation for complexity was evolution, where random small variations over many generations progressively led to a life of greater and greater sophistication. But science has just recently discovered that variation comes from genetic mutation, and that even helpful mutations usually break genes. That's not evolution, that's devolution. So what is the evidence for some X factor that accounts for biological complexity? Let's think about it. If you were to come across this formation for the first time, what could you conclude from examining it? There's no apparent evidence that shows when it was made, who made it, or how it was made. But we do have clear evidence that it was not arranged randomly. It was planned by an intelligent being. The purposeful arrangement of parts, that is the way, the only way, that we recognize the work of a mind. And the more intricately the parts are arranged, the stronger the evidence that a mind was at work. The X factor that accounts for complexity is intelligence. An intelligent being is responsible for much of life. The exquisite and purposeful design found throughout nature is overpowering evidence. You might say, hold on a second. Don't we have to see the arrangement being put together to decide for sure that it was done on purpose? After all, we can see how an intelligent builder constructs a home. If we can't see or understand how design occurs in nature, why should we believe there is an intelligence behind it? Well, it's what we can see that is the whole point. Suppose three visitors from a distant place stumbled across this surprising stone configuration that they had never heard of before. Not knowing how it was formed, one visitor might think it had been chiseled. The second guesses that power tools were used. The third might suppose it was cut by lasers. But none of them would conclude that Mount Rushmore was formed accidentally through gradual random erosion by wind and rain, they would immediately know it was purposely designed just by perceiving the intention behind the work. The purposeful design of nature was nearly universally held common knowledge for millennia. Some thinkers, such as the philosopher Aristotle, believed that purpose was built right into nature. Others, such as Galen, the esteemed physician in Rome, thought that purpose had been added to nature. But almost everyone, educated or not, religious or not, realized that life was intentionally designed. Going beyond biology, other fields have acknowledged purposeful design through the ages. Astronomy, chemistry, and physics all reveal arrangement and order. Science took a detour from that strong consensus when Charles Darwin proposed random, unguided evolutionary causes. Now we know that Darwin was right for the case of small changes in life. 
but the void of evidence for large random evolutionary changes supports the enduring consensus of purposeful design. So who is this mind? One thing we know is that it must be phenomenally intelligent to be able to design life. What's more, a mind is at least as intelligent as its work has shown. It's likely much more intelligent. But it's clear that errors do occur in nature. Babies are born with birth defects. Good people get cancer. Why? As I said earlier, I count myself among those biologists who think that science alone may not be able to answer the question of who or why. Perhaps philosophy and theology are needed for that. But the identity of the designer is a separate question. The bottom line is that just like those travelers encountering Mount Rushmore for the first time, we can see the evidence. If we carefully study it, we can know with certainty that life was designed by a mind. In this short series, we only scratched the surface of the topic of the elegant, purposeful arrangement of the parts of the cell and how that points so strongly to a mind. But the discussion continues on the series website. Please go there for a deeper look at these topics. Finally, thanks for watching this series. I hope it has expanded your own appreciation for the elegance and design of nature.